I don't know where I was going with that. I just found this effect on my streaming software and it was fun. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Happy Thursday. Oh no, we're lagging already. What's new? What's new? Ah, hey there. How's it going, everyone? Thank you for joining the stream. You're all as on time as I am, or maybe a little more on time. Not gonna lie, I missed my alarm this morning. Had a good night's sleep until about half an hour ago, and then threw everything together to get this stream started. But, I'm ready. I'm ready, are you ready? I think we're all ready. Does the sound good? Are we all good? Should I get back in my can? Get it, can D? Can of Devon, I don't know. Whew. <laughs> I gotta find new ways to start the stream, you know? Anyways, how's everyone doing? It's Devin here, of course, as you know. And uh, we're gonna be drawing some rejected animals today. No 3D printing in sight. Just a uh, sketch pad and a pen and me. So, let me just go ahead and uh, get rid of that effect. Could do it all, the whole stream, but I, I, I think you'd get tired of it. All right, all right. Waiting for hours, huh? All right. How's everyone doing in the chat? We're good. I mean, I'm getting your responses pretty late, but I am gonna try to respond to you all, and I'm definitely gonna be looking for your suggestions today because we're drawing rejected animals. Um, hopefully most of you are familiar with the rejected animal page that I have on Instagram. I know not everyone's on Instagram, but basically I draw funky animals that don't exist and they probably shouldn't exist. And uh, whether that's a play on an existing animal or just a completely new creature of my own imagination, it's all allowed. And uh, we're gonna let your imagination take part today. So, okay, I like this idea. If you're going to suggest something, tag make anything, like AK-14 just did. That'll make it easier for me to catch. Of course, I'm going to miss a whole bunch of suggestions while I'm drawing. I like to spend my time and focus on my drawings. But hopefully I can uh, get to a lot of, or several ideas today. And uh, make it fun to watch. So I've got my sketch pad here. i got my camera set up. It's not a straight top-down view. Because once again, I, I was preparing pretty quickly, but I think it's a cool angle. I'll, of course, move to the corner. Whoop. Trying to cover up some of my old sketches, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll show them on accident, but I don't know. No spoilers. I got my shawl on. Most underrated piece of clothing. Let's me uh, rub my hand all over my artwork without smearing things or getting, getting too sweaty or anything. Common problem of mine. All right. <laughs> so AK wanted a, a sheep with a giraffe head with the Make Anything logo. Well, today is only tangentially related to Make Anything. I mean, we are on Make Anything, but Rejected Animals is a little kind of its own thing. Um, don't feel bad if I turn down your ideas. I'm, I'm very selective here, and uh, I'm going to be making decisions based on just how I feel right now and what I'm willing to draw. So, even if you have a great idea, we'll see, we'll see. <sighs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm still waking up, no lie. Diprosaurus rex, a cheese consumption animal, a banana frog, I'm kind of just getting warmed up, so I'm probably going to start with just some weird, uh, mostly abstract things. But we can start with something like that. Let's start with the 
Let's do a banana frog. Sure. Whose idea was that? Whoop de whoop. Whoop de whoop. Yeah, you were already in here before the chat started, so that's cool. Let me know if you guys like the camera angle or whatever. You can see the tripod leg here every now and then. I'm literally like hugging my camera to get this angle. And I know I draw very small, so what can I do? Now, banana frog. This is going to be a small one. I'm just doing some little warm up sketches. I actually drew some frogs yesterday. If I accidentally reveal those drawings, you'll see my frogs. Or maybe I'll show them just for fun. So, I'm taking questions as well. We'll double this up as a QA. Whoops, I should have had the banana. See, sometimes you gotta think things out. I wasn't really thinking things out. So this frog is probably not gonna actually be a banana. But I'm just using that idea to form my initial general shape to create what will probably just become an absolutely random animal, because that's normally what I do. Go for just total weird, out of the ordinary madness. I'll try to throw in some drawing tips here and there. If anyone's joining along, give me a give me a cool emoji. Give me your favorite emoji if you're drawing along today. It'd be cool to know. Some people have their sketch pads out. And I know the it's not like the sharpest angle. I I promise next time I do a drawing stream, I'll have the setup a little bit more set up. As I say, every single stream, it's a it's a work in progress. I feel like I've gotten better. Still don't have satellite internet. Come on, Starlink, get it together. I'd love to do a stream without a single moment of lag. Whew. So, if you haven't noticed, my, my line drawing style, I don't do warm up, like I don't do, what's the word, construction lines, I guess. I've just learned to commit, and uh, drawing rejected animals is conducive to that because I usually don't have to l go for a specific look. If I make a mistake, I make it part of the drawing, right? This is banana frog. I mean, he kind of still looks like a banana. I didn't really get to fit in much banana in there. But we'll give him uh, little tiny eyes up here. And then, I don't know, this is like the stem of the banana. <laughs> it's it's kind of wonky. You know, you gotta have a tongue shooting out though. And just smack dabs a fly up there. <laughs> Are you joining us? Natalie might join us today at some points here and there. Probably just as a voice in the distance. Whew. Yes, yes. So, lots of dots and cross-hatching. Um, I don't know how technical I should get here. Usually when you're drawing, I mean, definitely when you're drawing, throwing in shadows, you gotta consider the light source. I usually keep it simple, top left or top right. So here we got the light coming from here. So everything that would be behind that would be blocked by something. So the back of the leg here would be blocked by the front of the leg. So that's get, that gets a shadow. And we're imagining this back leg is, uh, the light is coming from behind, pretty much. So maybe it's not totally accurate, but anytime I have a back leg like that, I like to shade it nice and dark to make it stand out so it doesn't get too crowded. Especially with bugs and insects or anything with a lot of arms, legs, an octopus. There's so many things overlapping that you really want to use shade to uh, create some depth like that. Anyways, that's a kind of banana frog. Still kind of wobbly today. Warming up, warming up. <laughs> cool, glad you like it. Whoop de whoop. There are lamb bananas in Liverpool. Lamb in front, banana at back. I don't know what you mean by that they exist in Liverpool. Like it's an actual creature walking around Liverpool, a lamb banana? Somehow, I doubt that. Whew. 
Yeah, it's funny with the shading or the light. I almost always go from the top right, but sometimes I. Well, no, I, I, I always like either start by drawing a highlight or a shadow, but it's usually always on the right side. So depending on what I draw first, the light is coming from a different direction. And there's definitely several times I make the mistake where I have highlights and shadows on the same side, which would pretty much never happen. We're figuring things out. OK. A buff buffalo. Joseph, I like that. I like it. Question is, do I look up uh, references? I usually don't. A buffalo, I have an idea in my head what it looks like, and it's kind of fun to sometimes just go off the idea in my head, because I'll make some really weird mistakes. And like I'm saying, the mistakes work for me. They make it unique. But I also think it's a good thing when you're starting to draw to use references, and I want to be a good role model here. So let's go look at some buffalo. We gotta see how buff they are in general to make sure that this one's extra buff. And I feel like instead of just calling it a buff buffalo, I like to merge things, so it might be a buffuffalo. Yeah? It's a good word. That makes me extra excited. And I'm sorry, I know uh, I'm getting awesome suggestions, and I might forget who suggested what. They might end up on my uh, Instagram page without uh, proper <laughs> acknowledgement or whatever. But make sure to follow the page at rejected.animals, and you could be like, hey, that was my idea, and I will say thank you. All right. I'm going to look at some buffalo right now. Let me see if I can uh, get everything nice and set up here. Where's my desktop? Here we go. Here are buffalo, my friends. Oh, I forgot there's a few different kinds. There's the water buffalo, which has the really cool horns. It looks like a mustache on top of its head. But I, when I think buffalo, I think classic buffalo. What's up, Natalie? <laughs> People will barely hear you because the mic is on me, but hey, I know that's the way you like it. All right. Thank you for the super chat, Chase. Instead of a shoe bill, a stiletto bill. <laughs> shoe bills are like the birds, right? All right, I'll have to keep that one in mind because I'm, I'm going to draw this buff off a low. And I think, well, I really do like the water buffalo horns, so I probably will just go with those. It's all up to me. That's the beauty of drawing and the beauty of drawing for yourself. <laughs> you get to do whatever you want. So, I guess that's a good one. Look, at, he's already so huge. Like, how much more buff can I make this guy? Definitely the arms and legs, I guess. We can definitely make the arms and legs more buff. We can try to add some definition here to the body. <laughs> I'm also not exactly uh, the most familiar with uh, buffalo anatomy muscle structure, but, you know. Yes, my sister Mel is here, moderating wonderfully. I tried to do the stream a little earlier today so that she could join from Sweden. In fact, I wanted everyone to be able to join who maybe can't always join, so I'm trying a different time today. Hence, jumping onto the stream straight out of bed. But that's my own fault. I should be waking up earlier than 11.30. <laughs> All right, buffalo. So I'm going to start with the head. The head is, doesn't need much modification, but I can just throw my own style onto it. Like I said, I'm just so into these horns that I'm going to go straight into them. Kind of start establishing the size of this drawing. Are you going to be drawing the same things, Natalie? Oh, excellent. Natalie's also going to be drawing her own versions, and she's totally going to let me share them on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was a way for you guys to live send over your images. Let me know in the comments if there's any way that I can like bring up some of your drawings on the screen. Might be an idea for the next time we do this, but it could be cool. Could be cool. All right. See, the problem when I use a reference is I try to look at it a little too much, and then I get a little obsessed with trying to follow it and have everything right. So I'm going to try not to look at it. In fact, I might just turn that off. 
Once I get the mental image. Yeah, he's just a <laughs> big old sausage with tiny little legs. I got the horns. What else do you need? Okay. So I'll ignore the reference. So yeah, I got a weird, <laughs> weird shape here for the horn, but that's because the face is in front. And uh, let's see. Nostrils. So yeah, there's definitely different ways to draw. I don't expect everyone to like just go straight with pen. Go ahead, use a pencil, use an eraser. I'm not trying to show off or anything. This is just how I enjoy drawing. And honestly, if I used a pencil, I'd probably have a few nicer drawings. But gosh, I'm just a lazy artist, I guess. And there's something about just making it permanent right off the bat. It's exciting. So. <laughs> it's a sly looking buffalo. He's like, hey. I don't know what a buff face would look like, so that's okay. The horns are a little wonky. Not exactly centered on his head, but we'll allow it. I'm going to give him a little bit of hair up here, too. Also, to separate the horns from the head, a little bit of shading. How's that? Unfortunately, the lens I have right now doesn't zoom in more. I might switch lenses. Actually, I probably should, so maybe after this drawing. I'd also be able to not be so wrapped around my uh, camera right now. It might be more comfortable for me to draw, honestly. I'm not trying to make excuses, but the way I'm crowded around my sketchbook trying to keep the orientation <laughs> right for you guys does affect my drawing a bit. Anyways, here we go. I only know so much about muscles, but Natalie can yell at me. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just going to add a bunch of chunks here and there and everywhere. Right there. Yeah, but I'm trying to make them way more buff. I'm not using the drawing, otherwise then it's just a regular buffalo. Oh my god. That was going to be his hoof, but that's way too short, so the hoof's going to go underneath that. <laughs> oh, buffalo. Oh, and you know he's got to be uh, flexing. Although I don't want to overlap him, so it's just going to be a little half flex like that. I think I was saying just cute. Discord server, you're right, that would probably work. That's the thing people do. All right, um, I do have a, a Discord server for my patrons, but that's its own thing. And I definitely won't be able to set that up today. But I, it's a good option for next time. Maybe I can do it today. How long does it take to set up a Discord server? Probably not long. All right, so now we can really make the muscles stand out. Once again, I'm having the lighting coming from the same direction, as you can tell. And just look at how much depth that gives the biceps there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it really uh, enhances the buffness. Sometimes I do shading, sometimes I don't. In this case, it's necessary. Do you mind if I change it? The drawing? Yeah, you can mess it up. <laughs> All right. Now the stomach, I mean, he's chunky and buff at the same time, but there we go. Get those abdominals in there. <laughs> Good thing I didn't draw him any bigger or he would have gone off the page. Um, the back legs. I definitely get the leg anatomy wrong all the time. I really should learn this stuff, but it's also fun to just fudge. Those are his calves. I gotta give him one of those, uh, what are those, like, butt lines when you have buff butt. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that would look. Flexed butt? The flex butt line? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. It's a pretty good butt flex. 
All righty. Whenever I do these streams, I always end up making the drawings way larger than I normally would. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Should I make his tail buff, too? Yeah, his tail could be flexing, too. <laughs> no, that's just going to look like he's pooping out an arm. Um, I believe in you. I don't believe in me. I'm not doing it. Well, yeah, no. no. Just a tail. <laughs> Just the tail. Make this guy look. I can't wait to see yours. I'm gonna. No, it's... He looks ill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he looks literally sick. No. Swole buffalo. Yes. All right. So, like I said, throwing in. Right here where the back leg overlaps, we got to make it darker just to stand out. So even the side that gets light gets some shading, and the parts that are in the dark get even more shading. Especially around the edges where it overlaps. My art style is definitely like a blend of uh, totally illustrative, but I also bring in some concepts I learned in design school. I try to at least. Um, I mean, just proper shading and light direction is one of those things that I learned. Of course, illustrators pay attention to that stuff as well if they're professionals, but I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. I like the fact that my style has kind of evolved into a mixture of what I learned from my technical side of things, as well as just the way I've been drawing my whole life. My lines probably got a bit cleaner. Although, I gotta say, there was no time that I was drawing more than in high school. I literally always had a sketchbook in hand. I was that kid who took every break to just sit behind a sketchbook and fill it up. I tried to do a full page like this, crowded every day. That's a pretty buff looking buffalo. I don't know how those muscles travel up here. They have additional like obliques, I guess. All right, so on top of the shadow having like being on the back of where the light is, obviously like something like this arm is gonna cast a shadow as well. So you gotta think about how the shadows are being cast. That can create a nice dark border here, which also makes it stand out. And the hoofs are going to be black, so with a little bit of shine. So this is where I would make the mistake, because with the light objects, I usually throw in shadows, and then with dark objects, I'll throw in highlights. But sometimes I accidentally put the highlights on the same side. Here, I want to put it on this side. So I can just pre-highlight it like that. And I'm going to try to add the little notch in for like the hoof, because I didn't do that earlier. And then I'll just fill it in black. Which is also so very satisfying. All right. I think he's a pretty good, pretty good buffalo. I'm about set with this one. Oh well, no, we're gonna sh draw those in. It's gonna make we're gonna make this really dark. I like having some black elements in my drawings. And I've finally just expanded my uh, my inventory or my my tool set just a bit for my whole life since not my whole life but probably since seventh eighth grade I've just been using the Pilot G205 pen. So trusty but I just recently started using the 07 as well and I gotta say it's really nice. Especially for filling in large surfaces like this. I know they make even larger ones. But um, I don't know if it's just the few latest batches I've gotten of these G2s, but I've had a few pens where they just don't come out cleanly. And these slightly wider ones seem to flow a bit better. So I've been doing some drawings where I only use this fat pen. Maybe I'll do some like that today just so uh, I draw a little larger and it shows up a little nicer on the stream. 
I think we got pretty good. It's looking all right. I don't know how, how many of you are looking, watching from your phone versus on a big screen, like a computer or a TV. I guess this is pretty tiny if you're looking from your phone, but uh, hey, you can live cast this on your television if you'd like. <laughs> It's more fun than watching paint dry, at least. All right, another thing you can do on top of adding the shadows is you can actually uh, accentuate the outlines. So I, I like to run over the outline a second time with this fat pen on the sides that are in the shadow. And that just makes it stand out better. It makes it a little more dynamic. Like, I don't know. I think that looks really good, just adding that line like that. And it's also good practice for just tracing, following the same exact line. This is something we had to do in, in college for sure. We'd have to draw very technical drawings, very precisely, all with pen, with different line thicknesses all throughout. And uh, like that, oh, I made it a little too wide, I'd have to throw it away and start a new one. Oh man, they really busted my butt in design school, but that's how you learn, right? I mean, I'm still making the mistake, but <laughs> less so than I used to. Also, I'm going to rotate now. I honestly, I'm usually rotating my sketchbook a lot more than I am right now because, again, I'm trying to make it camera friendly, but I definitely, it's easier to draw lines from the right side when I'm right handed. So, turning the sketchbook. It's a nice way to uh, save yourself some awkward line angles. There we go. A thick line here also helps separate the foreground, background of those arms. And here I'm going to try to kind of taper it a little bit more. I can thicken the line here under the horn to make it stand out from the, his neck. Double C, neck. I might add a few more muscle lines there. He could have been more buff, but he's pretty, he's definitely buff. I mean, compared to those stocky, skinny legs, surprisingly stocky legs that buffalo have, I don't know how they support their bodies. This guy has no problem, though. This, this guy is the fastest buffalo in the West. All right, a few more little dots here and there. Cut the legs off at the knees and we have a low buff. <laughs> That's another thing I like to do, just take uh, an animal and uh, exaggerate or change one part of its body. I've done a few giraffes, of course. Actually, I don't think I ever shared my short giraffe because it, it ended up just looking weird. But like, yeah, take a buffalo, give it little tiny legs. That could be fun. Here I give it big giant legs. Oops, didn't use my shawl. Spread a little ink there. That's the thing about using the bigger pen. It also takes longer to dry the ink, so there can be smears. Another reason to rotate the sketchbook. Alrighty. I think we're just about there. Maybe I'm gonna have a shadow here that the horn is casting. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna try to avoid too much shadow on the face just to not let it get too crowded. Buffalo. I like it. I'm gonna call it there. Take a look. Good final. I gotta give you guys at least one just like full screen look at him. Buffalo. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Time for your next uh, suggestions. I'm gonna write this guy's name here. Buff. Buff. Buffalo. I 
Didn't do a ground shadow here, sometimes I do. Actually, let's do a little bit. Since I shaded so much of the drawing, I'm just gonna do some lines like this. I just take whatever points are touching the ground and pull a few lines off to the direction of the shadow. Just like that. Just a little tiny suggestion grounds the image pretty well. I think that's a good tip right there. <laughs> All right, Taryn, still here with the cheese. <laughs> I gotta say, I admire your consistency. You're here for every stream to promote cheese. I mean, I'd be hard pressed to find anyone as excited about cheese. And uh, you must be in the industry. <laughs> that was a great looking buffalo. That is not buff though. You just decided to take your own take on it. Does he have glasses? Are you gonna keep working on it? We're gonna move on to the next one. Buff buffalo. Okay. A ninja warrior, comically buff ninja. Well, we just did the buffness. I'm going to move on from the buffness. A llama dinosaur. What would that look like? Usually, I, I, need just, I just need a name to, to draw inspiration from. It's about a good name, more so than a good idea to me, sometimes. Mm hmm hmm hmm. llama, T Rex, got a lot of animals coming together. Okay, mysterious hunters, I'm gonna take your idea because I got I do Well we've got two super chats already, right? Oh three! Kevin, sorry I missed your super chat. Sloth as a bird with tiny T Rex sloth arms. Stiletto Bill and a cheesy chat. Okay, right, the cheese. I'm going to do the cheese because I, I do like the idea of a cow as cheese because um, cows have spots. Swiss cheese has holes. So I can draw a cow with like Swiss cheese holes in him and it'll, it'll be kind of funny. We'll do it as a smaller one though, for sure. I won't even use reference this time. <laughs> yeah, I might screw up. Cow. Head, ears. I know the basics. I know where the nose goes. He's gonna have these big surprised cockeyed eyes pointing out in each direction because he's like, oh my gosh, I'm made of cheese. Am I dreaming? Little tongue sticking out. I mean, this has to be a derpy cow. That is kind of the classic derpy face right there, is it not? Cockeyed with a little tongue sticking out. All right, so now I'm going to start drawing the cow. This would be a good one probably to do construction lines because you could outline the whole cow and then start working out how you're going to cut holes out of it. But I'm going to accept the challenge and just kind of start, start right there. Luckily, we did similar exercises like this in design school too, where you just are drawing a lot of abstract shapes, a lot of... Uh, Sausages and stuff. So there's one hole. It might just look like a, a cow that got hit with a shotgun, but I'm gonna try to make a lot of different size holes so that it has that cheesy look to it. And just little stumpy legs because I, again, don't know anything about anatomy. And it's a cartoon, so I can do that. Little black hooves. Poor thing. Oh, I think I just took out their udders. There's some strange kind of... Uh... Irony, the cow that is used to make cheese is the cheese. I think I'm going to try to stick with these smaller style drawings so I could get to more ideas and not have to commit to my drawings that turn out bad because I know there will be some. I'm 
This one is actually turning out pretty good. I like this. Are you going to show your buff buffalo? All right, ready for Natalie's wildly different drawing style? Just to give you guys an idea of the range we've got here. She's working with pencil. Oh, it's not buff buffalo. This is like a wise buffalo or something. What would you say? It's just a secretary. Secretary buffalo. Wow. Love that shading. Love the drool. Beautiful. All right, vote. Whose is better? <laughs> <laughs> the Buffalo or Natalie's? Just kidding. I know Natalie's is better. All right. <laughs> Say Natalie's because she's the one watching the chat. <laughs> She'll leave otherwise. What? Okay. I think that's enough holes around the border, so now I can just go ahead and finish the cow and then add a few more on the body afterwards. Every cow needs some little flies around the butt. It's a rule. All right, some little tiny holes here. Again, I want a lot of different sizes to really get the cheesiness into it. And I'm only gonna do very subtle shading on this one. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> you like that they're voting for you? <laughs> Why are you making it stinky cheese? <laughs> Is the cheese coming across or does it just look like a <laughs> cow with holes in it? Does it even still look like a cow because the spots... Now it doesn't look like it really has spots, it's just got holes. Maybe I shouldn't have made them so round. What's that one phobia? Tri Tri tryptophobia? Tryptophobia? Yeah, this, this drawing is freaking out people for many reasons. Alright, I'm just gonna throw some dots along the edge that is in shade. Little tiny dots. That's my most minimal way of shading things. Cows have like... Big black nose, right? Like that? Too late. Okay. Yeah, I keep mixing up the Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the Just don't accidentally end the live stream or anything. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Swiss cow. Not fully cowish, but I'll just make that nose darker. So I'm gonna draw the nose holes that were a little black. I'm gonna make those white and kind of flip things around. Fill in the rest. That's the other nice thing about making things solid black is you can draw over anything else you've already done. See, Nadia knows uh, pink nostril. Pink nostril. Well, come on, there's gotta be different ones. Uh-oh. That's not a cow. Don't say that. <laughs> this is a cow. I really should have kept the udders on. But <laughs> the, the largest hole is where the udders would have been. That would have made it obviously a cow. Anyways. What about... It's acceptable. It's up to the standard of rejected animals, I'd say. It's cute at the very least. No? I think it's really cute, yeah. You're saying... I don't know. I don't know if it's just because of the live stream. Silence okay. worries me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Same idea with the, with the shadows. Just little lines coming off from the points that are on the ground. So if you think about it, the shadow itself would actually be cast this big blob over here on the bottom right, since the light's coming from here. We don't want to draw in that whole shadow, but the darkest shadow is whatever's closest to the surface that the shadow is being cast on. The shadow is being cast on the ground, the feet are touching the ground. So that's where the shadows would be near black. And that's all we're just uh, kind of indicating there with those little streaks. And it kind of just fades out into what would be the lighter shadow. Devin, I know you'd like this, like, draw a flying fish. A flying fish? Yeah. That's a real animal. Okay. No. What? I do, I do like that. Although... 
that makes me wonder, like, another thing I like to do when I'm coming up with uh, rejected animals is think of an animal like that, a flying fish. What else could a fish be doing instead of flying? Well, obviously not just a running fish, maybe? A walking fish? I have drawn a few fish that stand on their back fins, but to make it uh, very obvious, maybe there's something we could do there. Um, I'm going to look up the shoe bill stork to see if the stiletto bill has any hope of becoming a real thing. I'm not good at drawing shoes, but it did give me a super chat. <laughs> Dude, shoe bill should be a rejected animal right off the bat anyways. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stream this in case anyone hasn't seen the shoe bill before. A shoe bill in Little Baton? Look at this bird. The real life Muppet, Muppet right here. What? Oh my gosh. It already looks kind of like a stiletto. Where would the heel go, you know? Hmm. Dude, they look terrifying from the front. Shoebill Stork face mask. I'm sure those are sold out. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. For some reason, I feel like if I search stiletto, it might not yeah. have safe results. Well, you're on stage. Yes, but I still am not going to stream it directly. Well, Lots of legs. Channel. Oh my gosh. Can I do this? I don't know if I could pull it off, man. Chase, I, I want to satisfy your desire for a stiletto bill, but I just don't know how I would do it. Oh, the ghost of Natalie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking for? Uh, Oh, it's down. I have short arms. Yeah, this is my administrative keyboard up here. Mm -hmm. What were you going to look up? Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton? I don't know how to say it. Louis Vuitton? What? Oh my god. Louis Vuitton. Did you call them <laughs> Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> that could be your off brand. Say <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Oh, because you want like the logo on it? No, the pattern. Red bottom. Red bottom? We're doing black and white drawings here. I know. <laughs> Segway. Carl the buff cheese. You're you're all obsessed with buff cheese, huh? Hulu, cheese and buffness. Hulu batons. <laughs> <laughs> Rejected clothing. The off brand. <laughs> oh, those are the ones you're looking for. Yeah. Here we got some Lou Batons. <laughs> Put a shoe bill. But how am I going to do a shoe bill out of that? Oh, man. Shoe baton. What do you mean? <laughs> Shoey baton? Wait. No, it's got to be. <laughs> shoe billy baton? I don't know. Shoe billy baton. <laughs> oh. I guess I'll, dry. I'll try. It'll be a small one, but I'll try. It'll be a disaster, almost certainly. But... I think you'll, you'll all forgive me. I mean, what do you think? Does the letter just come out of the bottom of his bill? Because he already has the kind of swoop. I don't have your vision. You don't have my vision? I don't have my vision right now. <laughs> Something like, oh, where would it come out? It could come out from the top. Actually, that would make more sense. It's kind of like a unicorn. I can make the top of the bill flat, like the bottom of a stiletto. <clears throat> I think we can do this. Okay, we can do this. Make the beak really thin like a Oh, man. I'm nervous. Well, the thing is, I have to draw a stiletto that upside down, basically. Great. How do I even draw a stiletto upside down? That just makes it more challenging for me. Why don't you have it standing from its beak? <laughs> <laughs> just trying to make it harder and harder, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> um, actually, I think you were onto something with the red bottom, because then they have to yeah. show the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish someone just had an image of an upside down heel. 
because just mentally flipping it around in my head is going to be tough enough. You can take it to Photoshop. Yeah, no, I can't. I don't even have Photoshop on this computer. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at those. <laughs> All right, here we go. All or nothing, baby. <laughs> There's the... See, Melanie's got me. It is Louboutin. Louboutin? <laughs> See? Oh, my gosh. He psyched me. Louboutin? Louboutin? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Google Translate will know? Um, do it on your computer instead of my computer. But what if I um, chat? Hello? Um, okay. So that's the top of his mouth? So unsurprisingly, this looks a little wild. Let's hear it. No, you don't have volume. You don't. Louboutin. Thank you. Louboutin. Louboutin. Not Lil. Lil Baton. Although, good rap namer, Lil Baton. <laughs> Lil Baton? Yeah, this <laughs> looks real wild. I don't know if I can really get the shoe bill in it even. He's got such a strange features, like the eyes real close to the head. Oh yeah, this is nightmare fuel, 100%. This is gonna be the one, the one that we all see in our dreams tonight. Okay. Do they have tongues? Do birds? I know geese have tongues. They gotta have well, tongues. Well, this guy has his mouth open. Here, I'll let you know. Is that a tongue? I don't think so. Negative way. That. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that does not look like a tongue. Looks like something, but not a tongue. All right. In that case, we're just gonna fill the mouth with shadow. There's enough. Grossness going on here. I mean, he looks a little happy. He actually looks a little too happy for a shoe bill. I don't know why I like the name Shoe Bill Lily. <laughs> it's a good one. Right, we can also start naming these. I mean, these are like, these don't really need names because they, what they are is kind of the name. But if you're familiar with my Instagram, I like to get suggestions for their actual names as well. Shoe Bill Louie is pretty good. But I don't know if this one's going to end up on Instagram because it's a mess. And they I feel like, yeah, they got real stubby necks and their heads are just so huge proportionally to their body that I'm just going to exaggerate that. I'm just going to have a little tiny body here. I mean, I don't know. This turned out, I guess, better than I expected. Not great, but better than I expected. Oh my gosh. He can also be wearing stilettos. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. It's the best thing I've ever drawn. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Heel Billy. Oh. Gosh, I'm really bad at drawing shoes. I can't even like rotate them in my brain. Mad respect to the shoe designers out there. I gotta say, I, when I was studying product design, there were definitely students focused on shoes. It's one of those things that you're like all or nothing with shoes. And um, I had to do at least one assignment where I had to design shoes, and I have respect. That'd be fun for another live stream sometime to bring out my old drawings from college where I actually had to spend like eight hours on one page and show you what that looks like. 
Maybe even a little later today we'll take a look at some of them. That'd be really fun. I've started uh, <clears throat> collecting a few different ideas for live streams. If you guys ever have a, a cool idea. Whether it's drawing, 3D printing something, something completely different. I'm still trying to figure out how uh, wide of a net I can cast on Make Anything before I have to start another channel. Definitely don't want to be doing that right now. Can't, can't afford to. <laughs> All right, well, giving him stilettos, I gotta say, was a big uh, bonus for me. Really made it, but still a complete freak of nature. Guess that's the idea with rejected animals to some degree. I'll just outline this to make it a little more bold. This time around, I'm going to outline the entire thing, which is another strategy just to... Uh, Create a really nice, bold, cartoon look. <laughs> Alright, so the other one that was requested by Super Chat was a sloth as a bird with tiny T-Rex sloth arms. I feel like that's too many things happening at once that it will become a totally unrecognizable creature. I kind of like the idea of just a flying sloth. Yeah? Flying sloth? I'm in. I'm in for it. Hmm. Mm. You're not sold? I like it. I oh, think you. Because they got the big arms. They've already got the wide wingspan that something needs to fly. That's why I'm not sure I'm sold on giving it tiny arms, because then it's, how's it going to fly? And how would a sloth fly? I guess it wouldn't, because its wings would be like... Why don't you just give it a jetpack? Flapping so slow. <laughs> jetpack. <laughs> no, I've already done the uh, penguin with a jetpack. Okay. okay. Alright, is there anything else I can do? I can give him the eyebrows that they have. Mm. There we go. just makes him look way crazier. That's actually, I think that added so much shoe bill to it. Because they've got like this kind of weird, goofy smile with their bill, but they've got always these angry eyebrows. <laughs> it's the combination of the two. Not an angry brow. Strong. A strong brow. All right, there he is. Ooh, snake from soda cans? Oh, you mean the ones that go poof? What? <laughs> can you elaborate? Snake in a can? <laughs> poof. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. What, what was his name? Stiletto Bill? Yeah, who's that? That was... Louis the Shoey? Uh, who said that really good one? It was like, it was Shoe Billy. What was yours? I like yours. Ah, uh, Shoe Bill Louie. Shoe Bill Louie. I like that. This is favoritism, Devin. <laughs> Alrighty. So, I'm going to do a sloth bird. A little one. I will look up reference. I think I know the sloth pretty well, but um, just, I don't know. It's what I'm doing today, doing some reference photos. So with the sloth, it's really just about getting these eye line things. And Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the sloth. They're perfect for flying animals, actually, because they got shorter back legs and long, long arms. Oh, the Aww. giant sloth. This guy? Is that what you were looking no, at? No, 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 no. This one. Let's just look at cute animals for the rest of this stream. <laughs> I could. This guy is a man of nightmares. <laughs> that guy is hitting on me. <laughs> no, thank you. 
All right. Think we got the idea? All right, all right. Do I want to do a tiny one? Yeah, we can do a tiny one. I think I got room for one in here. <laughs> I think that's decent. The problem is the eyes are dark, but also the, the hair around the eyes are dark. So I'm going to just kind of try to fade it out from the corners a little bit just to indicate that it's darker, but not to crowd the eyes. Just very little, little tiny things like that. It's crazy when you're drawing small, every little dot can affect things just a bit. Maybe we'll give him a little bit of a messy hairstyle since I made his head such a perfectly round thing. We'll have just enough room here. They have two toes, right? Two toed sloth. I mean, most of these have three. These are not two toed sloths. These are the standard three toed sloths. Whee! <laughs> Wings are another thing that I'm not like great at drawing. I know that there's like certain, there's different wings, like there's the shorter ones here towards the inside. And then there's like a few layers of longer feathers. He's in there. I see it. You know what that reminds me of? It's, um, you know, like, Michelin cherub paintings. <laughs> I could see this in the Sistine Chapel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. I don't know. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> Little butt giggle. Ooh. Wee. <laughs> Got to give him some clouds so we know he's up above living his sloth dreams. I feel like this is a sloth dream right here. If any animal would dream of flight. Is that one video where the guy picks him up? Yeah. Exactly. That's why I thought this would work so well, because this is basically what sloths do when they're like trying to grab onto something. They just spread their arms way out. The wings are definitely shoddy, but hey. It's rejected animals, baby. I think it's definitely cute. There we go. Some close-up looks of Shoebill Louie, as well as our Swiss cow. All right, so now we're at the point where uh, the sketchbook is getting a little crowded. So usually what I do here is it becomes a game of trying to fill every nook and cranny. Rather than trying to do specific animals, I kind of just start drawing my own imaginary things that, that fit. Play a bit of the line game with myself where I just start some line and then I have to turn it into a creature or an animal. So let's see. I'm just going to do a little something like this. And then I can be like, OK, those could be eyes, but they could be ears. This could be a big smile. I'm going to actually put the eyes all the way down here. Like that, and then maybe he's just got some weird uh, octopus mustache mouth thing. Hey, Devin. A lot of people have spoken. Plague Ductor. Plague Ductor? Duck four. Like a duck plague doctor? Yeah. 
Is the Plague Doctor the ones that have those, like, gnarly masks? Yes. Sounds very challenging. That's quite the descriptor, but... Mm. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> So this kind of guy, since it's not based on any animal, this is the kind of guy where you can have fun naming him. So uh, taking all suggestions, it really, uh, really just about coming up with a fun name. Since there's not really anything about him. I don't know. Looks like a little bug type thing. Maybe I give him some spots too. I've got some ladybug action going on with this shell. Sometimes I also just keep my drawings really vague, where you're like, I can't tell if that's an eye or a nostril or this or that. So everyone can kind of see their own image. I'm going to give him eyebrows, too. I like the idea of a bug with eyebrows. And bugs don't have ears either, but welcome to my world, baby. All right. Can we draw in a little plague doctor? Do we have room? I think so. It's a... It's a Vivid enough image that it can be created in a very uh, less detailed way. They've got these shawls wrapped around their head. Interesting. Back when they respected the shawl. Gotta get some quack indication right there. Why does he carry a stick? To beat people. Um. Are they always wearing glasses too? Looks like it. <clears throat> well, yeah, the whole thing's a mask, but guys still make him look like a duck. Oh, that just makes him look like he's got crazy eyes. Which is also okay. <laughs> oh, he looks very cute. Drapery is another thing that can be quite challenging to draw, but it's fun to shade in a bit, too. Even though this is a small one, I'll give it some shading. Oh, sorry, a bit off the screen there. <laughs> what? What kind of <laughs> laugh is that? Are people, are people demeaning my duck? No, no. Hey, 
I like that. <clears throat> I do, I do. Plague. Yeah, so that's definitely one of the ones where uh, it just comes from a good name. Plague Doctor inspires the little guy. Wee. It's pretty fun. Pretty, pretty fun. I'd say your content is fueled by dad jokes for sure. <laughs> yeah, puns are definitely welcome. They're not always welcome everywhere, but on rejected animals, sure. Um, let's see if we can fit a little snaky guy in here, or like an eel of some sort. What is that? It looks like an elephant trunk. It's a snake mermaid. I don't know. Nah, you should try to set up a Discord server. <laughs> My first time? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just kidding. Next time, next time we'll do a Discord server. <clears throat> Basically, you can still you can still um, send me drawings to uh, Instagram at Rejected Animals, and I will take the best ones and post them on my story to share with everyone. That's the best I can do today. Or maybe even uh, I might be able to throw together a little album for the YouTube posts. Everyone has their own thing now. It's crazy. This is why I hesitate so much when something new comes out, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Twitter, or whatever their thing is called. By now it's like, should I really join this new social media when there's going to be another one in a month? Or Madness. Okay. We filled up a lot of this page now. We got a little, good little rectangle here. What else can we throw in? Somebody says give it a tiny little bikini bra. My snake? Give it a bikini. How? <laughs> a snakini. <laughs> well, yeah, because that would make it a mermaid instead of a fish, right? I gotta give it this little Your seashell. Bra. How in the world? This is gonna, I'm gonna regret this, but it's not like it's the most amazing drawing to begin with. Do the shells go outward? I think so, right? <laughs> What do you mean? That is definitely where her snake boobs go, right? One third of the way down. Yeah, it's definitely just gonna look <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> well, this is this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna fight me on this. Look up where do where do snails you do snakes? Such a good job. It looks amazing. No. Good job. I know it doesn't. It's but exactly it... where it should be. <laughs> <laughs> um Alexa, do snakes have nipples? Are you smacking me like a nipple is a bad thing? Alright. Come on. Natalie thinks I'm going to get demonetized for talking about nipples. 
not a nipple free zone. Alright. Maybe I'll just do another little something or another here. Or, I don't know, let's see if we got any suggestions. Um, Egg Spider. Woo. The Egg Spider is our mascot. I can do an Egg Spider, but I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Oh, I like this brain slug. Yeah. <laughs> Brain slug is a good name, but I kind of want to draw it like a snail with a like with the brain on its back instead of a shell. That's your interpretation. It's not a slug anymore at that point, though, is it? Oh, well, I guess. Do do do. Spiders, the animal with way too many legs and eyes and everything for its own good. Yeah, these are the kinds of drawings where you really have to plan out what am I drawing first? Whatever goes in front, basically. So in this case, it's not too hard. The front legs go first. Then you just got to find a way to arrange it that it still reads well. Sometimes it's not about doing things totally realistic, but just about good reading. By that, I just mean you look at it and you understand what it is. In real life, if you saw a spider, like, curled into a ball, you wouldn't actually be able to make out each individual leg, necessarily. I guess that's an illustrator's trick. And I'll just have a little indication of the last leg there that's hidden in the back. Is this an egg spider? In the literal form. Gotta fit all the eyes there. What else do spiders have? I think that's pretty much it. Like, you definitely don't want to go overboard with an egg, otherwise it's no longer an egg. There's my egg spider. <laughs> Flying sloth. My beautiful. Mer snake. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use every inch here. We're gonna do a little tiny brain slug, snail, brain snail. It doesn't sound as good, but it would look better. This is where I have conflicts. I love drawing snails, though. So I'll take any opportunity to draw a snail. Whoops. I know they have the four things. The sensors and the eyeballs. Somebody said the spider needs... No, those are eyes. eyeballs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I can't see that far. They're tiny. Most spiders, they only have two, like, large eyes, and the rest ones are really small. Mm. Tough to identify. I shouldn't be talking spider knowledge while I know there's people here from the Spider ID channel, Discord. I'm going to get schooled. Oh, yeah. This is a fun one. This might be a good one to, like, take a little further someday. The cool concept. Feels like something that Jack of the Dust would do. If you follow him on Instagram, he makes all sorts of skull-based things. He has a skull snake snail. But I think a brain snail works really cool as well. Of course, I don't know how to draw a brain really either. I just know there's a lot of folds. You have Google at your fingertips. I do, but it's just not my way. I think it'll get the point across at the very least. No, uh, wait, this is the cerebrum or the cerebellum? Natalie, you should know this. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right. I like them. All right, we're just over an hour. I do think this is going to be a shorter stream. I just wanted to throw something up since uh, it's going to take another week or so to make a real video for you guys. Really excited for my next Make Anything video. Look forward to it. Um, I guess I won't give you any spoilers this time. Hope you've all already checked out my Tsugita Cube. That's one I've been excited about for a long time. In fact, I was just going through my... Uh, doing a little bit of organizing on my idea list of just like future video ideas and that one has been on there for a long time revisiting the Tsugite Tangle puzzle that I did back in 2018, 2017. Okay, so another fun thing here, um, a little lesson. When you have like two different materials here and you want to differentiate them, or at least the way I do it, I'll just use a different hatch or like different shading style. So for the brain, I use little tiny lines, and for the snail, I'll just use dots. And um, usually that's just based on the kind of texture you think the surface would have. I think snails have a little kind of... Well, I know they've got this really interesting, like, um, cellular-looking structure on their skin, but this guy's too small to actually do that, so I think the dots do a decent job of showing his snailiness. And I will give this a nice dark line on the ground. I probably shaded this guy a little bit too much, but it's okay. Aren't there some slugs that like put rocks on their back or something? I'm trying to wonder if I could still name this a brain slug just because I like the name. But no, that's a snail. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about the name. Mm. Boop, boop, boop. There he is. Brain snail, brain slug. Hmm. I think I'm going to call it for today. Do you want to draw more? All right, let's do another round of suggestions. Throw them in the chat. What else can we do? We'll do another two or three, maybe. I guess I should be going. I'm just, I don't know. I just started this chat first thing in the day. Feels weird. <laughs> Caddis fly larvae are the ones that make the rock shells. Wow, that's, that's some deep knowledge right there. Mikhail the brain snail. Hello from France. A potato dog. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> and that's kind of like the last guy. I do. cheese with your face on it. <laughs> I already did the cheese cow. You know Come on now. Like hmm? A rocking horse? Like. A horse? Like a real life rocking horse? A rock horse. Oh, like rock and roll? Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm so bad at drawing horses. I'm not going to do a horse. Piano, <laughs> you know, your horse girl. <laughs> Hmm. Like a heavy metal. Yeah. I can't do that. I yeah, cannot. Can. I believe in you. All right, I'll do it as a small uh, one. Hippie hippo. A hippie hippo. Deer. <laughs> earwig. I feel like I already did an earwig in like a previous. Oh, I've definitely done an ear with a wig. Stoop. Okay. Stoop. Rocking horse. 
Yeah, Devin, have you ever done a self-portrait? Have I ever done a self-portrait? Um... I don't... Maybe just like a super simplified cartoony. Alright. How do I draw thrashing hair? This horse is the mane of all manes. I warned you, I can't draw a horse. You can look up a horse. It won't help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drawing all the hair here. So there's another one where I'm creating the difference in value so that it stands out from the rest of the horse. But I'm also adding detail and trying to create some directionality. I just want this to look like it's flowing because that's what would be happening with a rock, a rocking horse. That was a good idea. So I had to do it. I had to at least try. I don't know what's going on here. I might just hide hide things in, in shading. And there's definitely one that needs some action lines. I'll probably throw some music notes in a little later. If I was really skilled, he'd be wearing like a leather jacket or something. Oh, you could put... <laughs> I can't even draw a collar on a jacket. <laughs> Can I do a little demo? There you go. Rock, rock and horse. Studs on there. All right, all right. He's got to be doing the. Is there room for him to throw up a, a rock symbol? Not really. I should have planned that a little better. Well, he's kind of got to be bucking, I guess, so. going to be like. Sorry, I'm silent right now. Dead air, I know, but I got to focus on this thing. Brain cells. This is shaking <laughs> all my brain power to put a leather jacket on a horse. Can you blame me? Woo! Okay. How do I make his jacket look more rock and roll? Um, yeah. Make it more of a motorcycle. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. I was trying to make him like kicking oh, no. his legs back. <laughs> Oh wait, they don't have tails like that. I gave him a cow tail. This is going to end a disaster. Why didn't I listen to my gut? Use a reference? To just avoid this. <laughs> this is going to end my whole career. Uh, I think you can save it. 
I don't know how to do the horse leg. Ah! User reference. Yeah, the lesson, user reference, or you'll end up with this. He's gonna have a front butt. And his front legs are so stubby. Oh man, it's already... I mean, that's basically what I'm up against, but yeah. I did it wrong. I just did it straight up just, wrong. Just make a the knee should have been going down. Oh, well, this guy is closer to what you were before, right? Yeah, but where's, <laughs> where's the knee? <laughs> well, I tried. I think that, yeah. <laughs> You're a good girlfriend, I'll give you that. Be able to compliment this drawing. That takes. <laughs> I can't draw a horse, so who am I? Yeah, where's your rocking horse? <laughs> oh man, oh man. This is why I usually draw abstract creatures. There's no way to be wrong. With this, there's definitely ways. Wow, Mozambique. I've never had anyone in my chat that I know of from Mozambique. Impressive. <laughs> I wish it could be a whole scene where he's just like in a mosh pit, just bucking people out of the pit. Pretty accurate. This is one where I'm like, do I keep working on it to salvage? Or am I wasting my time? I don't know. It's, it's something. It's on par with my, it's on par with my crowbar that I posted the other day. I think I can save it with shading and details that make you forget what's happening. <laughs> I don't know why I've been making all the front legs too short today. I think it's just trying to fit things into a smaller space. <clears throat> Some detail stitches on the leather jacket here <clears throat> to try to make it look more... Like leather or something. Also, someone suggesting a baguette. <laughs> wee wee. I like it, baguette snake. Although it needs a better name. I like the idea. Ooh, someone from Germany. Good Abend, I think. I don't know what time it is in German right now. Germany. Evening. Maybe. Probably not. Um. All right. I'd probably get a lot more black in here if I was going to spend more time on it. Probably more solid black, but I'm just going to do some quick hatching. Oh, Devin, I just think it's cute. A kiwi frog? Kiwi frog, eh? I already did a banana frog, but I do agree it could be cute. 
10.30. Oh. PM. So. How do you greet someone at night? I don't even know how to greet someone at night in English. You don't say good night. You still say good evening? Or just... Uh, what's up? You know? I kept up with my Duolingo. <laughs> no, I'm literally saying in English. I don't know what the best way to say. To greet people formally for a nighttime event, for example. I feel like just... <laughs> that's it's always whenever you say good night that's saying bye how do you say good night hello <laughs> welcome to the beginning of the night oh good evening <laughs> yes but what if it's 9 p.m it's not the evening anymore uh, i think english is broken i mean this we've all known but this is one such case wow it's great to see you tonight right but there's no like good this or that I don't know. Guten Abend? Yeah. Guten Abend. That's what Good I said. Night, Guten Nacht. Guten. No, not Nacht. That's naked. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, maybe that's, that's the way to greet people at night. Hey, okay, it did turn out okay. I think the adding the extra details draws away from the strange anatomy back here a little bit. It's a very wide one. It's the other thing I don't like about posting on Instagram. Like, all my drawings have to fit in a square or there's going to be a lot of empty space. Although I definitely like working with empty space with drawings like this. I kind of, sometimes if I want something to be small, I'll literally make it really tiny inside of this big square. It's just a little, little dot. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite types of live streams to do. Just drawing. It's, I feel like it's fun. I don't know, is it fun to watch? I know I'm talking less than I do when I'm working in Fusion 360 or something, but I feel like this is definitely uh, something more people can get into easily, especially if you want to follow along. You don't need anything. That's paper and something to draw with. Someone asked, is your last name French? My last name is not French, it's Spanish. Montes, mountains, from my dad's side of the family in Peru. So I'm half German, half Peruvian. Pretty rare combo, although strangely enough, there was a friend of mine in high school who's also half German, half Peruvian. So maybe it's just one of those laws of attraction. <laughs> Peruvians and Germans just get along. Maybe their cultures are like... Just the right combination. I don't know. Well, yeah, opposites attract, right? All right, I'll give a little bit more black into here. Just get some good contrast. A little more work on the hair, maybe. Oh man, I wish I could say that. In the Netherlands? Oh, then. <laughs> it's pretty similar. Like, all the Nor uh, Scandinavian languages have some overlap. I shouldn't say all. I shouldn't pretend to know anything about language. Mm. Etymology? Is that the word? Study of language? How many false things have I said this stream? <laughs> Yeehaw! I like it. I like it. I changed my mind. Thanks for uh, encouraging me to finish that, Natalie. I was about to give up five seconds in. Happy Barra. 
his melon. Maybe we have good capybara plant. I feel like I do one. I totally had to do something like that. Like a kangaroo capybara in the last rejected animal stream, I think. And it turned out pretty freaky. <laughs> I'm still stuck on. Like kiwi, like the bird or the fruit? Mm. Not that they look very different. I would say up to you. I mean, I might interpret it as not a frog because we already did a frog. I might take the kiwi aspect and just make like a kiwi bug. Rockin' horse. We did it. <laughs> there we go. Heck yeah. It looks good. Not bad, not bad. Did you catch my intro, Natalie? No. Oh, it was really good. I guess I'll have to. If it's I basically good. found this really cool effect where I like come out of a, a, a hole. I made myself come out of the candy. <laughs> it was really dumb and great. I'm proud of it. <laughs> All right. Frog with kiwi eyes. Kiwi dog, kiwi frog. Gosh. The thing is, how do you make it a kiwi without it being cut open, like the emoji, but then it's... But then, I do think it could be like a bug where the kiwi is the bottom of the shell, but I already did the kind of humming, or not hummingbird, what am I saying? Ladybug type thing. Um, oh, how about, okay, I'll do a kiwi slice for like the mouth. It'll just be a kiwi monster. This is going to be a totally fictional one. Whenever I do these streams, it ends up, I mean, it is called rejected animals, and that's the easiest way to come up with ideas, I think, is, or to... To recommend an idea, it has to be something to draw from, so it's usually an animal. But sometimes I just like drawing monsters, or just imaginary creatures. Oh, just like those little, um, I think they're like 90s Japanese toys, they're just absolutely Oh yeah, Natalie and so I good. found these on Pinterest the other day. Let's see if you can draw it up on here. Just romantically surf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can there are these like old Japanese gachapon like uh, little vending machine toys, and they are pretty awesome. They're basically like vintage Japanese cartoon retro rejected animals. Sorry, oh, I'm off camera. So there's the start of my kiwi monster. Something I like to do with kiwis. I've drawn a few kiwis in my life. But anything with like little fuzz like a kiwi, it's fun to just not actually draw an outline, but just to create the outline out of little fuzzes like that. I think it's really fun. This guy's gonna look like a bit of a Muppet. And yeah, I'll just go ahead and like start shading it by continuing that pattern that follows the edge of the kiwi here. And just by uh, how closely you group these little hairs you can create lightness and darkness to shade in your creature and create more depth i feel like he should have his eyes really close together too you don't think you could just find it on google mm. just search like vintage japanese monster toys <laughs> yeah maybe not it's gonna be hard for me to bring that onto the screen, though. Even this guy is just. I mean, yeah, I can just show it. You mind if I show your phone? I don't think there's anything on there. No. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's horrible. So there's all these Japanese monsters like that. Just awful little creatures, but they're so good. They're so good. I am definitely this guy right here. I am. That's my guy. That's me. This is you? That's Natalie. That's me. 
<laughs> and that's Bjork. <laughs> you don't think so? That wasn't an insult. I love Bjork. I just thought that little creature looks... Has some of her style with the hair. Anyways. So yeah, the darkest parts, I guess I, I do draw a bit of a line here. Maybe this is one that I have to zoom in on. Give you guys a look, a close-up look of what's going on. It's kind of a fun view. Yeah, he's definitely a Muppet. And I'll just give him the kiwi feet, like the bird. It's just like a weird version of the kiwi. Oh my god. <laughs> And then I'll just keep adding little fuzz here at the bottom until I feel like I have the, a good amount of depth to this drawing. It still looks a little bit too flat for me. And there would definitely be shadow filling the mouth, but that, I do need to maintain the kiwiness inside, so I'll just give it a little bit of a dark line here at the top. Oof. This is where you can see all my mistakes when I zoom in so much, huh? No. Little mistakes are okay, because... It's a tiny drawing, and there's a lot happening, and... Nothing that exists is perfect. The mistakes are all part of the game. <laughs> all right. I think that's that for the kiwi monster. Just a little bit of ground indication. Womp. <laughs> uh, maybe a little more of an outline. Yeah. Yes, happy accidents, of course. <laughs> Draw Devin Montez. I'm, I can't. I can't. It'll be so bad. I want you to, please. Mm. I can't. Draw an otterfish chasing its own tail for dinner. You drew a horse, so what's stopping you? I don't want me to look like that horse. <laughs> <laughs> a forkfish? Otterbox? Yeah, let's do some fish. Let's just do some fun fish. Exactly. Or fish. I guess I can do a fork fish. I don't know if that's a play on something. Are there are there spoon fishes? <laughs> yeah, they're playing it off of a. Uh, I know there's a sword fish. Yeah. But it's not a knife fish. So you'd think it would knows. it would be a gun fish or something instead. Oh, that's this guy's also going to have googly eyes smacked together. Do, do, do. Yeah. Big ol' saucer fish eyes. <laughs> I don't know. Barely a fish. <laughs> kind of just looks like a fork. His allure. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let it be. Whenever I'm drawing something underwater, throw a few bubbles in there, even though it's pretty rare for bubbles to just occur underwater. But there's also just little particles, you know? I'll do little, these little sparkly plus signs. Somebody had a unipede. <laughs> a unipede. Have I not done that? I've done. Oh. Wait, reiterate the unipede. I don't know if I've done this one yet, but I always want to do a 50 percentipede, where it's just like half of one, or just on individual legs. Maybe we'll do both of them.
so quick look. This is when I probably could reference the centipede. Gross looking things, aren't they? Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, we saw this yeah. one at the gym one day. I thought those were uh, just like overgrown silverfish, but no. centipede, huh? I saw a gnarly one like this in uh, Japan, in the jungle. It chased me. I'm pretty sure they're venomous. I mean, that's the, this is the kind that I Im imagine when I think of a centipede, for sure. Oh my gosh, they're so gross. <laughs> I'm not really grossed out by bugs, but this guy, this is something. Okay. Like, what would a unipede even, it wouldn't even look like a centipede anymore, would it? Oh, these two, these are the ones that I also think of. The giant centipedes, they've got a very uh, specific sausagey look. Giant centipede, let's look it up. Oh, never mind, that's a different one. Anyways, I think... Hmm, it's this kind of idea. Gotta get the head right. So that's, the unipede is literally just gonna be like this front section. <laughs> they do have the tail too, so that's another way I can make it look like one. It's a challenge, it's a challenge to, to do that and still have the centipede part of it. But yeah, it's basically just to draw the head. Got these fangs too, gosh. What vicious little creatures. Now, I don't know if a unipede, if you were imagining a literal single foot, but I'm gonna at least interpret it as a single pair of feet. Does that make it a bipede? I don't know. So I'm just drawing all the little segments here individually. Could have just added lines afterwards, but this at least creates the very clear uh, segmentation of them. Maybe there's another one I gotta zoom in on. So he's got little beady eyes as well. Maybe even bigger, smaller than that, but that'll do. And then the fangs seem to come out of the side of their face here or something. I'm not exactly sure. It is a bit crowded. That's okay. That's the thing. Insects are just generally very crowded animals. There's a lot going on. They're very compact, efficient. All right. Now we'll draw the one segment. And the foot kind of comes out from underneath, so it's going to be like that. Boop. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's a more clear way to draw this. It's a little, little challenging. I don't know if this reads. And they gotta do the tail thing, which is basically similar to the front. It's tough when you're getting rid of the thing that like defines the animal, which is the fact that they have that they're long and have all these feet. Kind of just looks like a little shrimp. And I'm wondering if I can use some shadow on the ground to show that he's standing. I wish I could zoom halfway in between these two. Definitely a weird thing. Maybe not the most successful. I 
execution of that idea. Still a cool little creature though, even if you don't immediately see the unipede. There's a fun name. There he is, a little shrimpy unipede. <laughs> then I'll do a little more cartoony version for my 50% to Pete at least this time. So this one, I'm at least going to maintain the uh, long snaky body, so it's a little bit more obviously based on the centipede. But instead of just pairs of feet, he'll just have individual feet underneath. How he would go about walking, it's not my job to explain. I'm also going to give him a little, like, more cartoony feet, even though a real one wouldn't have feet, obviously. This is just my little cartoony version. Any more suggestions from the chat, Nat? Buffalo chicken caught my... Oh, Buffalo man. With the chicken's head. I do like the idea. We already have done the... It would be a... Chicken with a buffalo body, I feel like. Ooh, or no, a buffalo. fish tank. That vehicle. <laughs> That's good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty far. But That's okay. <laughs> there it is. That's my fifty percent to feed. I feel like it reads a little bit better than the uh, Unipede, as much as I like that name. And I didn't give him 50 legs, he's just half of a centipede. Centipedes don't actually have 100 legs. Or wait, they do, right? No. Is it the millipede or the centipede that's just total falsehood? Her and tipede. So a lot of the time, my ideas just come up from the fact that two words overlap, like percent. The cent is used in both the percent and the centipede, so you can combine them a lot. Kind of like our buffalo earlier, although that's kind of just a new word that I liked. That's pretty fun. A goat with wheels. <laughs> yeah, animals with wheels, that's a fun one too. But I do love the fish tank. We're going to do a fish tank. Shout out to whoever had that idea. Um, let's see. How am I going to do that, actually? It's one that I want to do well, but I'm not sure I will first try. And for once, I kind of want him to be facing right. No, nah, just kidding. <laughs> well, gosh, every single thing I've been drawing so far has been facing left. It's obviously my default. All right, so let's start with the tank treads. I'm trying to debate how large this needs to be. And I also am a little cramped up under my camera to do this. Homo sapiens, your idea? Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with the tank treads. And I'm going to do like a mostly side view, but maybe like a little bit top side view. Okay.
I also had to draw a lot of tanks in college. We actually went to military museums and would actually go draw tanks and helicopters and stuff from real life. I mean, they're super challenging, as you can imagine, so great practice for uh, really taking forms and breaking them up into boxes and stuff. Very different from the way I'm drawing here, where I'm kind of just, this is more illustrative. For sure. But I think I can at least get the point across with this one. So the way I do this kind of like almost side view is I basically draw it as a profile. And then here I can go in and add like the, the depth by going up from above a bit. We can add treads. I'll draw the center one too, because the center one goes straight up and then the, the lines kind of go outward and angle. That's just the one point perspective we're kind of trying to create. I'm not about to do a whole lesson on perspective today, but all of these lines converge to one point somewhere up here on the horizon. Make this bottom part of the tread pretty dark, or maybe even just colored in all the way. Yeah, I think that this part's gonna be black. And this tread, I can kind of bring it around just by creating the notches. This is one where I'd like to see how everyone interprets it their, their own way. There's always so many ways to do something. It's kind of sad that like, once I've posted an image and be like, this is what this creature looks like, there's other versions of it that will not be seen. Sometimes I have like a really good idea and, and my drawing isn't that great. I'm like, shoot, wasted that one. This one I feel like it'll work. Got the fish and I'm gonna like do another little fish tank thing on top of the fish. There's this fin on top of this uh, little turret thing. Oh, aren't they like trumpet fish? This is totally a trumpet fish on top. Just like that. <laughs> All right, this is a old looking fish. He's gonna look a little grody. He is a tank after all. Does he still have fins on the side or is that what the treads are replacing? I don't know. I'm going to have to do something to make it look a little more connected. It might just be a matter of shading it. But then again, sometimes that's how I do it. I just plop two things together. Kind of works. It is pretty wild. There's, there seems to be an infinite number of animal puns to be made. When you think it's all been done, you get one 
Like this is one where I'm just really like, how did I not think of that one before? Fish tank. Such a good one. I'm still gonna give him a bit of a fin here. I really do miss the college class. It was uh, one of my VizCom classes, visual communication, but this one semester. I mean, you can actually check him out on Instagram, Peter Hahn, super, I think Peter Hahn style is his Instagram handle. He's got a ton of followers because he's absolutely incredible when it comes to drawing animals and uh, also vehicles and this, this kind of stuff. He would absolutely nail the fish tank way better than I can do. You should definitely check out Peter Hahn style. Such an amazing artist, the stuff he can do. Without reference, he's just got so much practice and such an encyclopedia of knowledge in his brain that he can literally whip up just about any animal and really get the anatomy of it right. Unlike me, I don't even know how the fish tail connects to the body after all these years of drawing thousands of fish. Fish are fun too because you can shade them by creating these little scales. Little sea scales to shade them in. Pew. I'm gonna have him shooting out. What does the trumpet fish, what does the fish tank shoot out? Another fish? A torpedo fish? A shell? No, I, I know I can't draw shells after that snake. I think shells. Right, like artillery shells. I mean, oh, I have to do shells. It it's can't... another pun. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do those like pirouette snails, I think they're called. What are they called? We've, we've been watching alone. What are the ones they eat called? Little spirally ones. Per per something. Periwinkles. I can't believe I remembered that. Oh wait, those aren't the ones I was thinking. Oh, kind of. I want to do the really pointy shells. Anyways, I guess I just got to draw it from my brain, like I've been doing. I can't believe I didn't even realize the pun there until after. You literally are, shells are what are used. Oh my gosh. This one's way too large for uh, the size of the fish it's shooting out of. Maybe I'll shrink it down and... Uh... No, I'll probably replace it with a smaller one. Pew! No, conch are the huge ones. I'm thinking about there's some really skinny spiral shelled ones. Like the really long ones? Yeah. Should I just search uh, long thief nail? Long spiral shell. Is <laughs> okay. My resident Googler. There we go. I'm queen of Google. The queen of Google. What are they called? Yeah. Brandon Thatcher's. Really? Someone was a little bit too egotistical when they named that shell. My name's Brad Thatcher. I'm gonna name this snail the Brandon Thatcher's. Tibia shells. The conch is a beautiful shell, I gotta say, but... Oh, look at that one. It's even, like, tapered on both ends. But this is really the one I was thinking of. I'll draw another one and I'll swap it out in Photoshop. Not gonna lie, I do it sometimes. <laughs> well, I just need it to be tiny because the trumpet fish is so small. Or maybe not. Maybe I do stick with the original one. This is one of those things where I'm just gonna draw it like 10 times and fail to get it right every time. Not easy to get a spiral to look like it's spiraling. Is 
Does it make more sense to shoot out that way? Looks like it goes with, looks like it would be more aerodynamic in this direction. There we go. It's pretty similar to the first one I drew, but I'll give myself the option there. I'm realizing I probably should have shaded this part under the tank with scales as well, just to stay consistent. Oops. Sorry, I'm stuck on this. I do that still to this day. And I'm going to shade this long trumpet so that you kind of get the indication that it's rounded. And. Do I, yeah, maybe a little bit of, just a little peak of the other side of the tread sticking out on the other side of the fish. It's like a silhouette. Slightest indication there. Maybe we can see the rest of the fish here through the treads. That was a fun one. Ha! I like it. I like it a lot. Fish tank! There it is. Good one. Good one. Well, looks like we might as well fill this page up today because done a good, a good job so far. Oh, that's cute. Can I share it? Thank you. Thank you for the idea, Homo sapien. XX09. Have I heard of Jabil Nylon 4500? No, I haven't. Draw a sheep in emo clothes. It would be a deep sheep. <laughs> Is that deep? I feel like it would, if, if it was a sheep philosopher, maybe. A monitor lizard. It's a computer monitor. Mm, not bad, not bad. A trumpet snail. Could work, could work. Would, the, would it just be a trumpet on the back? I can't do another one like that, because I already did the brain snail. So that's close enough. Whoops, I showed off my other page. Might as well share it. I am pretty. This is another name that I liked. The Brontos, Brontosornicorn. <laughs> Brontosornicorn. Sticking a unicorn horn on any other animal is probably the easiest way to create a rejected animal. <laughs> But I liked the name, so I did it anyways. An octonaut. I like that. I feel like I've drawn a space octopus before. I'm going to draw a little one. I always love a good octopus. Oop. I'm getting a little sloppy with my lines. So with glass, I kind of try to create this double wall with a really subtle second outline. I mean, oof, what am I doing here? Octopuses, they've got these little bumps on them, so that's how I'm going to shade it. Mm. 
maybe even I'll do some shading here behind the octopus. And to create some depth of his helmet. And the biggest challenge is always getting all eight legs in there. I'm going to make these a little stumpier than they might actually be because, yeah. Like I said, getting all those tentacles in there. If you remember my last live stream, I struggled a lot creating my... Uh, I forget what the name was. It was a helicopter octopus. Helicoptopus, I must have been. <laughs> yes, that is what it was called. And I definitely took several tries to get the, the tentacles to be the propeller on the helicopter and also have eight of them. I might have ended up not having eight. I don't remember. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Two to go in the back just to create the depth. Whee! It's kind of a simple one, but I like it. Okay, gotta show you. I like it. It's a the Princess Periwinkle Fairy that Natalie drew. With a little sea snail head. Sea sh sea snail. She she wears seashells down by the seashore. Very cute. Thank you. <laughs> I like this guy. Cute little octopus. Wait, what was the name of this one? The space octopus. It had a oh. must have had a name for astronoctopus, or maybe I just drew it in, but despite not having a punny name, just because I like drawing octopi. Octo Octonaut. Yeah, yeah. So cool. that is a good name. Okay, thank you for finding that. I don't know if I would have remembered it. So good. Drawing little tentacles is always fun. Definitely not going to get the actual number of tent like little suction cups they really have. But I just draw these little bumps along, kind of like the tread on the fish tank. Just little indications that there's tent there's uh, suction cups under there. This is one I have to be careful not to overdo. I'm almost at that point. There we go. We can just uh, I'm in space now. I'm gonna assume he's near Jupiter. And then we can draw a little Saturn type of planet here. I'm not going to say they're Jupiter and Saturn because I'm 100% sure they're not in the correct uh, positioning or anything like that. Oh, no mommy short spider. <laughs> mommy short legs. That's fun. That is quite a divergence from reality. Mommy short legs. Mm. <laughs> I've done, I've already done a. I think I did Daddy No Legs or Daddy Short Legs. So I think I did Daddy Short Legs already. It's definitely on my Instagram. I should have made it a mommy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Supposedly in Germany they had a TV show for small kids. Octonaut. It had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Ooh. I really like that one. That one's definitely going on the Instagram. I think most of these will. Maybe not the snake mermaid. <laughs> oh wait, is it Octona or Octonaut? Octo. I screwed up. That's okay. 
Octo. Not. Ooh. Ain't that cute? I like it. Mm. I do, I guess I need to make this, since the shell has such a heavy line here, I should make the line a little heavier on that side of the drawing. Again, hopefully not screwing it up. I don't even know how I have the strength to try these things with pen, knowing that, like, I could screw up half an hour's work by just drawing one line wrong, but I do it. Love it. A few more stars. All right, looks like we got space for one more little thingy right here. Octi the Octonaut. Otto. I like the name Otto. Oh, uh, the Buffalo Chicken. That is a good one. But I, my first buffalo wasn't so great. Will the second one be any better? Redemption. Redemption fail. Here it goes. Okay, rather than just do like a buffalo head on a chicken or vice versa, I'm going to try to really blend it. And it's likely to become a disaster, but you got to give it a shot. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what a chicken beak looks like. This is looking more like the shoe bill. But, you know, throw the waddle in there and you're good. Oh, wait, do, do chickens have waddles under their neck, or is that just turkeys? The turkeys have the one that comes from oh, the top no, of their nose. The chickens have the one on top. Oh, I don't know. Anyways, this one this one's kind of wild. I <laughs> drew his beak all off to the side. Wonky, anyways. This is one of the wonky ones. Sometimes it's fun. I mean, I guess, does he, it's got to have a chicken body. They do. Okay, they do have them. Oh, but they're more like, they're not so, blobby. more blobby. I mean, that's mm. <laughs> Just give it 10 provocative questions. Chicken well, it's barely a <laughs> buffalo. And I don't know how to make it more buffalo. I guess instead of chicken legs, you can have hooves. I really need to get a little better at my hoof drawing, too. Yes, there it is, my scientifically accurate buffalo chicken. I can say anything is scientifically accurate if it doesn't exist. This is the world we live in now. Not really, if it's not backed by science. <laughs> it's not unbacked by science. I haven't seen any papers that say buffalo chickens don't look like this. Oh my gosh. Once again, the, drawing the wings. One day, I'm just going to sit down and practice wings and hooves. And I will redraw the buffalo chicken in all of its glory. For now, this is what we get.
Bubble. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, I guess it kind of works. Barely, but but it works. <laughs> Bubble O chick. Yeehaw. This is a good page. I'm pretty happy with all of them. Started out very worried with the rocking horse. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. There is some space here. And I will fill one day. But we're at two and a half hours just about, so with that, I'm going to call it a day. This was such a fun stream. I definitely want to keep having these rejected animal streams. I think the next live stream, however, well, we might be unboxing another printer. Probably that. And then I'll also do a live stream with more Patreon pegboard pixels soon, because I am so behind on those. And I got to get more pixels on the pegboard behind me, which you can't see right now. But you know what I'm talking about. If you know, if you know, you know. Anyways, that was really fun. Thank you all for the great suggestions. I know there's tons of great ones down there that I haven't even been able to see. So save them for the next stream and hopefully I'll get to them that time. But anyways, that's, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Super fun. Don't, by all means, keep drawing. But for me, I'm knackered. See you in the next one. Stay inspired. Cool. Bye.